first off, I wish explodes. Thanks for clicking on the old thumbnail. Got to do some lever work. You can run along with what I'm doing. I'm going to be making a dangler loop strap. So stay with me, and we'll get to it. So if you're looking to learn a few lever working techniques, I'm going to move the camera down. I'm going to go through making how to do a lever belt loop. So what I've done initially is I've used a strap cutter to cut the belt strap in a nice even length and that's given me enough lever to do the strap. Now what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to round the ends off using something that's readily available and that's the rounded end of my long stainless steel ruler. Move that up, make sure it's running the length and neat and tight. So you get the radius sort of mark even that goes up to there and holding it carefully down take your time and use a very sharp Stanley utility type blade you've now profile on the end of the belt obviously we have to choose a length that we want there to go at an end plus enough space and we're going to be fitting three poppers there's the popper about there which goes through the D and there'll be a snap there holding it on the D and then as that one goes over the top there'll be one here and one here so one two three snaps you don't want this one too low because you won't have a little bit of movement to allow it to move on the D um, or because it's not actually a straight now if you had a square D ring square D ring it will fit straight across but because it's a D it catches here catches here you actually need to allow it its own height within that area unless you start taking cuts out scallops out of those two heads there which can be done as well I usually put a little bit of that on later on which we'll see later okay but we need to fit three snaps one about there about there something like that and then as that one goes over the top we need one about there bottom one there third one there what I do like to do is run a tool like this along the lever and put a decorative line okay it's called a groover now when you start don't start quite at the far end because you need yourself a bit of spacing later on I'll show you so just run your line down through stop just before you get to the end because you don't know where to stop do the end in line with the line you've just done obviously stop just before you would have gone too far now you've got some lines On there you can actually finish off and stop at the right spots without going too far it's now running down this side again stop just before you think you would have done at the end so obviously there's a little bit to go on that end that means that you haven't gone too far Next tool I'm going to use is a 
beveler. Now what this tool does is go along a corner of the lever and skive off the 90 degree edge. So just catch the 90 degree edge This is a perfect example for me to show you how to sharpen one when it's got blunt. What you need is a very expensive piece of equipment to sharpen your beveler. It's a lolly stick of the right thickness and some 400 grit wet and dry. Oh yes. Lolly stick. 400 grit. Beverly bit there. Just rides up and down on a square bit of the lolly stick. So that's the finished side of the lever. It's a little bit more of a challenge to do the flesh side. But if it's been sharpened, it should be fine. Now the danger bit here is for your fingers when you're holding this down. You know, you want to be running like this rather than have your fingers there just in case that slips you'll catch yourself in your finger but yeah don't force it too much as the trick dangerous tools are blunt tools so I thought this was a good opportunity just to share that sharpening trick so now lines, the grooves and it's beveled. What I like to do now is dye it. It's called a dauber. I am actually using five ins. This is my chestnut mix. I'm not going to do tober stripes on this one. I'm just literally going to be doing a nice even colour. I do the back first just to get into the swing of it. can do this on the kitchen towel. The main snag I imagine with this is having too much loaded in the dauber, going over the edge, spilling a bit off the edge by catching the corner and then too much ends up on that side there. So when you do a next coat you'll end up with two where you'd spilt it. So I don't try and put too much in in one go. And I, I try and remove by squishing the dauber at the side of the bottle anything but get a great pool going off the side and onto your face you can go that way if you want but you will actually see the strokes so a circular motion loses the nap of the, the dauber marks and also if you spill some there don't lie that in there okay now the actual front of your strap Now you've got into the swing of using the dauber, you can either go like this, or 
or you can do the circular motion tired like you I like practicing my straightish line something like that and now the edges now that you've removed most of the dye from your dauber you hopefully won't cascade great drips down your front so I'm only going to go like that on the edges so now it's all had an evenish coat. Quick double checks on bits that have dried a bit unevenly. You can run it up and down a couple more times just to even it up if you want. But now, a little trick I do now that it's wet, it's formable your veg tan lever. So what you can do, whilst it's wet, because you've just dyed it, is run a slicker or something like this and tidy up the flesh side of the lever. So you don't need a slicker, you just use a sharpie. So that's the front side, nice and shiny the back you've tidied up a bit what sometimes you get a bit of a nap of the flesh side and what you can do is just whilst it's wet lay it down with a flat rounded surface of some tool and then whilst we're using wet leather keep it slightly wet a jar of water around somewhere. Here's your Dove soap. You can use uh, a gum. But I just rub a little bit of Dove soap up that wet side and then using your best slicker possible run up and down instead of a raw edge you end up with a shiny rounded edge dauber top of water on your edge if you remember it has been beveled so what the beveling's done is turned it from a 290 degrees you've chamfered it off technically if you'd use a router you'd chamfered it off with a, a radius sort of thing and what we're trying to do now is give it a nice crown so water the dove soap or gum tracker can the rounded section that you've gradually worn into the soap is still forming it in itself and slicking it in itself and then the slicker Don't press down too much because you'll distort and form that because it's still slightly damp. Just dash of water. And I'll zoom in. Hopefully you'll see the different edges. So that's unslicked. That's kind of half done. So you can actually feel the difference on the end there. So once again, water, gum trigger camp, or dump. So it's there. And then your slicker on an end
forming, coaxing, changing the shape of that end. And it just seals up the, the ragged end, as it were, the cut edge of the slick of the of the lever there. So that's nice and shiny. Okay, time to put some holes in here. I cannot uh, emphasize enough getting a really good piece of kit like this punch roll and the sort of 12 pound Draper Black Spur ones. Uh, get this from a, um, a really good lever tool supplier, something like Identity Store or Tandy, but I would go to Identity Store because it's more independent stores, okay? Um, this capstan head locks in, but it's also the fact that it's solid steel and it's a proper piece of kit and it cramps and clucks and clicks and everything about it is just professional. So what I'm looking to do is put that hole there first. So I'm going to go, I want that hole there, so I'm in the middle, I'm far enough away from the bend, click, and then a little wiggle wiggle. Now that that is there, I want that hole exactly in the same place again. You could score it with a braddle, or an awl, or you could hold it in the right place. and put the tool right through the hole you just made. I wouldn't try and do them both at the same time. Okay, so make your hole, that one, fold it where you're going to go and then put the tool itself back through the one you've just made in order to get your second one exactly lined up. And with those lined up, you fold that over and you place that where you want one of your next ones. So there or there and then repeat. So I want the next one about there. So I'm looking to get that equidistant. Something like that. Yep. Fold that over, line that up. You could use a really high tech tool, paintbrush handle. What you can do is you get a paintbrush handle of an old paintbrush and you could slide it through so you're not fouling yourself, but just to keep them lined up so you, you cut the top of that paintbrush handle off and it'll be the same size every time of the punch that you're using and it'll just register it, but I'm, I'm good enough to Right, so that, that will be there, okay? And if you don't use a paintbrush you want to cut down, as you put that down, you'll just knock the paintbrush out anyway. So I want that there. So that's where it's going to be. as well. And to install three sets of snaps so I put the rearward one on first so that's this post and a male oh that snaps like that and then I do the sort of cover head and then the female one like that. I hit the first one second one, which is this one, needs an anvil of which my of these is just right. So that sits in the bottom
Now, if you remember, I mentioned earlier that you can form the bottom loop so it's, it rides on the the D a little bit easier. Now, what you can do is either use a, a chisel such as this, which is a half round chisel, okay, and you literally cut out uh, two little scallops and the D will sit and ride in it, or you can get your slicker like that and you can you can sort of form it a little if you just want to ease a bit of a curve something like something like that and you can actually form it into a little stirrup sort of shape Does that makes sense and just encourage the lever to ride that D a little bit better as he's as he's coming off, so you should be able to see that the D now is slightly flared, and it'll just sit on there more happily. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me again. It's got six blades. You can do your edge with tan coat. You can do your edge with a different colour, like a black. You can use edge coat. Um, you could use resiline, but you do want to seal it in some way because you don't want ingress of moisture too much into that raw edge that you slicked over the slicking sort of seals it up a bit but you'd still want to seal that edge with something okay in your wax all right so thanks for joining me again for anybody new obviously this sort of uh, lever tutorial or workshop techniques i share now and again uh, to keep abreast of anything I'm uploading, best thing to do is hit that subscriber bell because uh, the notifications by YouTube is a bit sporadic. So the best option you can do is to get the notifications uh, rather than trying to drop by randomly now and again. Uh, huge thanks to Patreon once again for their support and thank you for about the seven or eight people who've subscribed this week. So thanks for staying with me this long. There'll be a couple more suggestions of videos to watch here, here, or here and here. I never quite got a swing of that yet. So thanks for joining me again. Good thing. Subscribe. See you on the next one.